Hello, I'm Butch Curry from Zombie Nirvana Games. Welcome to the latest installment of Fantasy Cartography with Adobe Photoshop, the podcast where I share my favorite tips, tricks, and techniques to help you make cool maps for your role-playing games. One of the things that I love about Photoshop is that there's always something new to learn about it. I spend a lot of time digging around on and offline for new tricks that I can apply to my map making, either directly or indirectly. Something that I've noticed, though, is that there's some confusion amongst the user base about some of Photoshop's tools. One that seems to be a particular source of trouble also happens to be one that we can use for some interesting effects in our cartography. It's the Dissolve mode in Photoshop, and we're going to take the next couple of episodes to look at it. This week, I'll explain what it is and how it works, and next time, we'll look at some different ways we can apply it. So, let's get started. So, what is Dissolve? Well, if you've watched a lot of kind of cheesy old TV shows or movies, you might have seen an effect where a scene changes from one to another by the image breaking up into little pixels. That's called a dissolve. Photoshop gives us the ability to create that same effect uh, by randomly filling an area with pixels. The problem that I've seen come up in some of the online discussions is that folks don't really understand exactly what's happening with that. To help illustrate what Dissolve is doing, I'm going to show you something first that isn't Dissolve. I'm just going to bring, use the Marquee tool, drag out a selection here, and then go into Filter, Noise, and Add Noise. And all that Noise is doing, you've seen it before, is randomly filling a selection uh, with pixels, black pixels. In this case, because we have monochromatic selected. Now, if you uh, change the amount, uh, the amount of space that is being filled with these pixels doesn't really change that much. Uh, what does happen is Photoshop changes the opacity of some of those pixels, so they turn from black to gray. So we're going to crank it all the way up so we get almost all black pixels. And we'll just zoom in real quick so you can take a look. Let me undo that. And do it one more time so you can get a close look and see exactly what I'm talking about there. You can see the amount of space that's being filled is about the same. The pixels just become darker as you turn up the amount. So we'll just hit OK, deselect, and zoom back out. I'll grab the marquee tool again, drag out another selection. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a bit more so we can see it uh, in comparison to our noise. And I'm going to hit Shift Backspace to bring up the Fill menu. We're going to keep it on the foreground color because we want to use black. But I'm going to change the mode from Normal to Dissolve. And I'm going to bring the opacity down to about 25% and hit OK. So what's just happened? Photoshop looked at our selection and randomly filled 25% of it, which was the opacity, with black pixels. If we zoom out, drag out another selection, bring up the fill menu again and change that to 50%, and hit OK, now Photoshop has filled half of that selection with black pixels. We can even crank it all the way up to 75% and make it very dark. And just to show you, we're going to go ahead and do it one more time at 100%. And you'll see that 100% in Dissolve mode is exactly like any other fill, because it fills 100% of that space with black pixels. So you might imagine that there's probably some interesting things we can do with this, because it lets us give the effect of adding noise but gives us much, much more precise control over how much is being added. Not only that, because Dissolve is a blend mode, uh, we can use it with a lot of different tools. We can use it with brushes, stamps, erasers, uh, just about anything that has a blend mode applied to it, uh, you can use Dissolve. So let me just show you what I mean. I'm going to select all of this and delete it. Grab a brush. And I'm going to bring the opacity of this brush down to about 10% and change the mode to Dissolve. So as I brush in, 
I'm just filling 10% of this space in with black pixels. If I bring the opacity up, again, same thing, it fills in 25%. Now, one of the things about Dissolve is that, by its very nature, it gives a very pixelated look. That stands out really sharply in a low-resolution image. If you're doing something in, say, uh, 72 DPI or even 150 DPI, that can really stand out. When you get up to around 300, 600 DPI, the pixels become so small uh, that you can't even really tell, so it's not really a problem. But if you're working at one of those lower resolutions, and you don't like that really hard-edged, pixelated look, you can just go into Filter, uh, Blur, and Gaussian Blur, and just give it a little touch of that Gaussian Blur. You can even bring it all the way down to, say, 0.2, 0.3, It'll just soften the edges up a bit. So that's our introduction to the dissolve mode. And next time, we'll really get start getting into some of the things that we can do with it in our map making. Before I go, I'll just mention that I have a map collection for sale online at yourgamesnow.com, rpgnow.com, and other fine PDF retailers. It's called Blank Slate Maps Volume 1, 10 Towns and Villages. And just like the title promises, it contains 10 unlabeled towns and village maps that you can customize to your heart's content. If you need a map in a hurry, or if you just want to look at some of my work, make sure you check it out. You can stop by ZombieNirvana.com for more information. And while you're there, don't forget to check out this week's show notes. Thanks for listening, and happy mapping! Will you go, Lassie, will you go?